In this tutorial, we're going to do a double exposure effect. So hi guys, welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me on our Facebook page at Retard Pro. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do a double exposure effect in Photoshop. It's very simple. We're going to take two images, align them on top of each other and yeah, kind of create a very creative image. Let's get right into it. Okay, so as you guys can see, I'm already in Photoshop. I've already imported my first layer here, which is basically just a leaves image here. As you guys can see from the bottom up, just some cool leaves and some trees. And as well, I've got another portrait image here as well, just shot against a gray background. Now, first of all, what I'm gonna do is just take the first canvas here from the portrait and as well the layer and just move that all the way over to our first canvas here with the leaves. All right, let's select the portrait here. We're gonna minimize that. We don't need that at the moment. Now the next step, again, I'm gonna press F, full screen mode, so we get not distracted here by the background. All right, so now let's take the move tool. And first of all, what I'm gonna do is just place my subject in here somewhere. I can also transform my subject still a little bit, so I can obviously transform this a little bit bigger, but I don't want to. I just want to have a little bit of shoulders and his head like this. Okay, great, gonna place him somewhere over here. Now for the next step that I want to do is obviously I want to extend here just left and right the background. So again, I'm going to take the marking tool as well here, right click, just say rectangular marking tool. And I'm just going to make a rough selection here. Command Z and Command V. So duplicate paste that as well. If I say command all you Windows users, please use control. All right, I'm going to press Command T again for getting into the transform mode. Now as well, what I'm going to do is just take this anchor point and just drag this out a little bit. So extend that, accept it from the top and do the same step again on the right hand side. So again, the portrait here, layer, then again, marking tool, literally just going to make a rough selection here, not adding the shoulder, okay? Command Z and Command V and Command T again, so transform mode, dragging this out. Okay, accept that. Next step, we're going to just merge everything. So select Shift here, select all the layers, right click, and we're merging all that together. Again, now I can just rename that to portrait, okay? Great, so now I've already got my background, everything set, I've got my subject here, everything looks nice. If I want to, I can also still retouch on that before I go into it, but obviously it's a little bit of arty farty stuff, so I'm not going to retouch too much on his skin. So let's also start now right away with just adding a bit of texture to the person. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first of all go over here to the quick selection tool, and please also don't use the magic wand, maybe just quick selection, it's easier to work with that and as well quicker. Don't press Q on the keyboard because otherwise you get into the quick selection mode as well. So I'm literally just going to go over him and just make a quick selection around him. Also I've created a tutorial, another free tutorial where I'm actually showing you guys how to do this advanced masking here. I showed it last week in another tutorial. Alright, so I've created here a selection around him. Next step that I want to do is literally just go to the mask icon down here, select the mask and we already created a cool mask around him. Now what I want to do is just refine the mask quickly, also just pressing right click here on the mask, so right click and go to refine mask. Okay, you're getting to the refine mask options here. I'm not playing with that too much today. It's also a lot of a creative approach, so I can just be a little bit rougher with this. I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and literally just go around the sides here so we get all the hair and everything in there. Yeah, and just getting a better selection, better mask actually out of this subject. Okay, on this side as well. And that's also what I showed more into depth last week. Okay, great. So we've made another quick selection out of this. I'm going to hit OK over here. That will render for us. And now we literally start with adding all the extra things in and getting everything ready for the leaves on top. So for the first step that I want to do now is literally just take this mask over here and drop that right onto our leaves. So again, I'm going to hold Alt, select the mask here and drag that all the way down. As you guys can see, it will clip directly to our leaves layer. Now I can go back to the portrait, press right click and say delete mask over here. So we don't have that anymore. Okay, next step that I'm going to do is go back to my blending options here and switch this layer from portrait all the way to vivid light. And directly you guys can see how that really jumps into our selection here just from the leaves and that mask. 
Obviously, I can still go in here into the leaves, which we're going to do in a moment, and we're just going to refine this mask a little bit, just with some brushing, black and white foreground colors again. But before I do that, I actually want to take just the layer over here from the leaves, not the mask, and invert that. First of all, also to get like a totally different color uh, correction here. So Command I to so completely invert that. And yeah, it looks very funky and very weird as well. <laughs> Next step that I'm going to do is just unlink this. Okay, like so, just press between the two layers here, the layer and mask, unlink that. Then as well the move tool, and I'm now able to move around this layer a little bit as you guys can see. Because we still have a mask here, it will directly still stick with our subject. Okay, so that's why I didn't start out right away now with the mask. I first wanted to, let's zoom out a little bit, I first want to place this layer a little bit better. So I'm going to press Command T in order to just rotate this a little bit. And kind of have a look where it looks a little bit better with the whole subject here. Maybe also I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So we have a little bit more, the leaves more prominent and a little bit bigger. So again, I'm going to hold Shift so it's equally expanding. Just take an anchor point on any side. And I'm going to drag this out all the way. So making it super big. Okay, like so, somewhere over here. Yeah, maybe let's rotate that a little bit more. Okay, maybe let's put it down here. I'm going to rotate that a little bit more. Okay, and let's have a look if we put that like so. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Whoops. First of all, I'm going to accept that quickly. Just go down a little bit. Okay, now I can still with Move Tool move my layers around. Okay, let's place it somewhere over here so we can maybe still see his eyes. So there's a little bit of detail there. Okay, and that's pretty good so far. Next step that I'm going to do, because we have a little bit of gap here and up there, I'm just going to go on the layer again, hold S for Clone Stamp Tool, so S again, hold Alt, and I'm literally just going to sample an area over here and sample again a little bit of those leaves back in there. Okay, the, as well the same for the top here, just a little bit. Okay, and that's all. Okay, so for the next step that I want to do is also go back to the mask over here. We can also select the link again so it's not moving around. And the mask, and I'm literally just going to zoom a little bit. And I'm going to press B for the brush, and literally just going to brush out the edges here a little bit. So I'm working with the Continuous 5 Pro tablet, and via the tablet I have a little wheel. I can change my brush really quickly over here. If you guys don't have that, please go up here to the top and just change it here at the top. Also, you can guys can press Control Alt together, move your mouth left and right, and that will also change your diameter of the brush, or up and down to change your featherness. So I'm basically going to change the hardness maybe to just 50%. Again, switch my foreground colors because we're painting on some masks now. And just with black, I'm hiding a little bit of this extra spill here. Okay, a little bit more. And my brush is super feathered, so I can do this a little bit quicker. So again, I'm also doing this really quickly. You guys can take a bit more time when you do this. Okay, like so. And I'm just roughly going over the sides here as well. Okay, a little bit more. And over here, okay. Yeah, that's basically it. Now I'm going to zoom out, and I think the contrast is still way too hard here on our inverted uh, layer. So what I'm going to do is just basically double tap here onto the layer to get into the layer styles. And now under the layer styles, under Blend If, I'm just going to hold Alt and take the black sliders and move them away a little bit. And as you guys can see, the whole black, the dark rich blacks disappear a little bit. So when it, but we still have all the white details here from our layer. So I'm going to take it somewhere over like this. Okay, accept that. And I can also directly see that the layer, I'm not too happy yet with our masking here and the layer position. So I'm just going to select the layer again. Also unlink this again and now move this around again. So just literally up a little bit. And you guys can obviously change this all the time. And be too totally creative with this, how you guys want to place this. So I'm just going to leave it like this now. Great, let's also go continue with the effects, how to get the colors and everything. Obviously the layer, you can move that around loads of times. I'm going to put the link in again, go back to portrait. And now first of all, I'm going to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So back to adjustments here at the top, going to select the hue and saturation. 
And now for the first step, I'm just going to say colorize over here. So directly we're getting a cool new neutral effect and it's all blended together a little bit better now and looks kind of better. But now I'm not too happy with this color yet. So I'm just going to go to hue over here and literally turn this a little bit more up to somewhere 200, a little bit more bluer. Yeah, something like this, 210 maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that as well. Now, if you would still want to um, increase the contrast a little bit, we can also play here with our lightness and darkness, obviously, to make this a little bit brighter or darker. I'm actually going to leave it like, yeah, like a plus four or so, okay, to flatten it a little bit to give it that flat look as well. Now, if you want to, you can also create another adjustment layer here just with hue and saturations and also give that a bit of contrast again, just with a curve here, take that up again giving that a little bit of contrast here, or you can do it directly via the lightness slider over here. But that will also obviously overall give it more contrast. So I'm going to leave it like a plus four and also switch on here my levels layer. Maybe take that up a little bit. Again, it's a little bit of fine tuning and playing here. Okay, great. So for the next step, I'm going to create as well a mask. I'm going to create again a dodge burn layer, again just with a new layer over here. Again hold command A, selecting everything with the selection. Marking tool, I'm going to press right click and say fill and fill this again with 50% foreground color here, just maybe under the contents. Okay, so we already have again a gray layer, again switching the blending option all the way down to soft light. B for the brush, I'm going to press 0 here on the keyboard actually because I want to set this just to a 7% opacity. So you can also press 0 0.7 or just 0 0.7, that will switch it to 7% opacity. Command D, getting out of the selection, and just B for the brush. And I'm going to choose here now a black foreground color. And I literally just want to enhance this beard a little bit, a little bit the eyebrows. Okay, maybe I'm going to darken and brighten up actually the eyes a little bit. I'm going to darken these areas a little bit. Okay, and just going, doing a little bit of dodge and burn. Again, I'm going to press Control all together to just feather my brush completely. It's a little bit too hard. Okay, also over here and brushing in here a little bit. So this is totally creative as well. So you guys can do whatever you want with this. And if you want to not have so much contrast, you can obviously brighten that again. So I'm going to switch the foreground colors back here to white. Okay, and now I'm going to dodge a little bit. Just brighten his eyes a little bit. Switching that over a little bit. Okay, like so. And around his lips a little bit. A little bit around here. Okay, giving that a bit more detail. Maybe down here. And yeah, I can also switch that quickly to normal so you guys can actually see where I painted now with the whole dodge and burn process. So you guys can see around the eyes a little bit and as well here the eyebrows, a little bit the beard. Okay, I'm going to switch that back to soft light again. So we're going to keep that at soft light. Now for the next step that I still want to do is also add like gradient map on top of everything. So I'm going to go down here and just select a gradient map. Whoop, there we go. And directly you guys can also see we're getting another cool effect here. So under the gradient map again, you can also play with a variety of different gradients over here, which will give you pretty cool effects. I also think this looks pretty cool. Yeah, and you guys can play around with that as well. So what I'm going to do is basically choose this gradient over here. And then as well, I'm going to just take the opacity down a bit. So maybe like just let's take it to like a 40% or so. A little bit in there. Like maybe just a 40 or 39, 40%. Yeah, that looks actually pretty cool. So before and after, before and after. Now for the next step again, I also want to still add like a little bit of a glow here in the top, like kind of a um, gradient as well. So I'm going to go back to the gradient tool over here, select just normal gradient adjustment layer now. And this time I'm first of all going to select here just radial, so it's a little bit more in the center. I'm also going to say reverse. And as well now from the gradient, I'm going to choose a gradient here that I created myself again. So it's basically a little bit of a lighter center point going over to a lighter yellow, an orange, a deeper orange, and then into black. So as you guys can also see here from the gradient. Okay, I'm going to select that. Okay. And also going to press right click and just say here rasterize layer. So I can literally just move this around and make it bigger, scale it, whatever I want to do with it. But now it's obviously still black. So I'm just going to switch it here to screen and directly I'm getting like a really cool flare or like an orange ball in, in the center here. But now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
press command T, take an anchor point again, hold shift, so it's equally expanding, and just make this super, super big. Okay, and I'm literally just going to move it over somewhere over here, maybe make it even bigger. Okay, like so. Yeah, so I'm kind of getting like a really cool gradient over there. Again, I'm going to accept that. Move it a little bit over, and now I can still move this layer around, dim it down a little bit, yeah, and place it wherever I want it to be. I think over the side here, that's pretty cool, maybe like so. And now for the next step, I still want to like just saturate these colors a little bit. So I'm going to go back to adjustment and back to hue and saturation. Also, first of all, before I play with the colors, I'm just going to hold Alt between the layers and clip that hue and saturation to this gradient. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, and first of all now, going back to the hue and saturation adjustment layer, I'm just going to take the saturation up a little bit. So it's giving that a little bit of a more boost. You can actually do it a little bit more, like a 40%. Okay, and if I want to, I can still also change the hue a little bit to give that a deeper, rich orange, red color. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and if, I, if it's all a little bit too much, you can obviously take the opacity down just a little bit. Okay, great. Let's make this a little bit bigger. That's basically all that you need to do in order to create this. But now if you still want to play a little bit with your uh, whole texture here on your subject, you can basically just go all the way down again to the layer with the leaves. Press the Move tool again and you can still rotate all of that. But obviously what happened now is still the link is still connected. So again, Command Z, just go step back, just unlink the link over here. Now you guys can move it around, you can double that, you can add more, you can clone in, whatever you guys want to do. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Let me just zoom out a little bit with Z. Press Command T and I'm just going to rotate this a little bit just to show you guys how many different styles you guys can create. Okay, like so. Maybe even more. Okay, like this maybe. And you can still move it around. Yeah, now it looks like there's a lot of leaves coming or trees coming from the bottom. Yeah, going up in his face. And now you guys can still go onto the mask here, refine the mask, brush that out, also clone in some more textures here at the top. Yeah, so as you guys can see, that is basically it. Just lining here some leaves on top of this guy's face. Now, if you guys like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions about this, also you can leave it down below in the comment section. I'm happy to interact with you guys and give you guys some feedback for this retouching technique. Yeah, thanks again guys for watching. Share it with all your friends and I'll see you guys all in the next Photoshop tutorial. Bye-bye.